It is uh, not surprising that the minority is already attacking you in its opening statement. We apologize to both of you. You shouldn't be treated that way. Some of the defenders of big tech and the Biden administration, as we know, have worked very hard to cast doubts on well, the legitimacy of your reporting, and some have gone so far to state it's irrelevant if Twitter was suppressing speech in coordination with the federal government. Uh, but this morning, we saw a stunning display of their attack of your character. We shouldn't be surprised. This is what the defenders of big government corruption do. This is the playbook. They destroy the messenger. We just saw it here on live television, and everybody can see it for themselves. And the, and the whistleblowers, of course, as well. Look, this is what we know. What you've documented carefully in the Twitter files are a couple of key facts. You will hear, people will hear a lot of things today, but this is what they need to know. The federal government, from Democrat members of Congress to intelligence agencies, including the FBI, used Twitter and other social media companies to censor Americans' speech. If the alarm bells are not going off, then you're not paying attention. Over the past three years, documents show, they prove, what you guys have, have uncovered here, is there's communication between Twitter and the FBI. It was constant. It was pervasive. Twitter was basically an FBI subsidiary before Elon Musk took it over. The Twitter files revealed that by 2020, Twitter was engaged in open information sharing with the intelligence community, and now we know there were many intelligence agencies apparently involved in this. The FBI pressured Twitter to act on election-related tweets leading up to the 2022 election. Of course, they did it in 2020 as well, and Twitter dutifully censored content as a result. Twitter executives restricted accounts. They censored speech that conflicted with the left's narrative. Twitter has used its internal tools to control and manipulate uh, considered speech considered misinformation, and who was determining that? It was the government bureaucrats. Documents show that Twitter used visibility filtering to restrict certain accounts and posts and removed people from the platform altogether. The Twitter files should be a matter of bipartisan concern for every member of Congress and every American citizen because it is a bedrock principle of our constitutional system that the government does not get to decide what speech is acceptable or true. Under the First Amendment, Americans have a right to speak freely, regardless of whether their speech upsets the preferred narrative. In fact, that's when it needs the most vigorous protection. Everybody on the left used to believe in that, or at least they purported to. Government and media fact-checkers frequently get things wrong. The American people can't and shouldn't rely on so-called experts to be the arbiters of truth, disinformation boards, and the like. It doesn't matter what political party you're, you're in. Government should not suppress important debates in public discourse. Gentlemen, uh, let me start with Mr. Taibbi. Uh, you have a long, award-winning journalist uh, career. You just highlighted here decades of experience reporting on some of the most conflict, uh, complex and important issues of our time. Where do you rate your reporting on the Twitter files among your whole body of work throughout your career? How, how serious is this? Um, well, first of all, uh, Mr. Congressman, thank you for the question. Uh, I would say, you know, I, I spent 10 years covering the aftermath of the 2008 financial crisis. Uh, that was obviously a very serious issue, but... Um, this Twitter file story and what we're looking at now and what we're investigating now, um, I, I don't think there's any comparison. This is by far the most serious thing um, that I've ever looked at, and it's, it's certainly the most grave story that I've ever worked on personally. I want to ask you both the same question, and that is, first of all, has anyone from the federal government contacted you during the course of this investigation or since you've reported on Twitter files, and number two, who do you think are the most egregious federal government agencies involved in this censorship exercise? Let me start with Mr. Schellenberger. Thank you, Congressman. Uh, I have not been contacted by anybody. Oh, sorry. Uh, thank you, Congressman. I have not been contacted by anybody in the Biden administration relating to this topic. And I would like to echo uh, what Matt just said. Uh, this is, I've never worked on an issue where so frequently while doing it, I just had chills go up my spine because of what I was seeing happening. I never thought in my own country that freedom of speech would be threatened in this way. And it's just frightening when you get into it. Um, the most recent, uh, our, our most recent discoveries, I mean, I think you understand the process is that we first raised a bunch of concerns around the way Twitter pre Elon Musk was uh, censoring people and creating blacklists. Very quickly, we discovered that we had FBI agents uh, basically and, and go other government officials, you know, demanding that Twitter take certain actions. We now know that the Department of Homeland Services, uh, which has uh, had, what's that? Security. Security, sorry, <laughs> Department of Homeland Security, uh, you know, had, had to try, try to create a disinformation board. Uh, that went away after public backlash, but we now realize that they have this other enterprise and they've been building out basically mechanisms to 
proliferate a censorship industrial complex around the country to censor on a whole range of issues. And so you've seen them, you've seen this censorship industry go from, well, we're just fighting ISIS to, well, we're just fighting Russian disinformation bots to, well, now we need to fight domestic misinformation, which is just saying we need to fight against people who are saying things we disagree with online. That's all that means. And I, I mean, it's not a slippery slope. It's an immediate leap into a, a terrifying mechanism that I, we only see in totalitarian societies of attempting to gain control over what the social media platforms are, allow, are allowing. And so, um, yeah, for me, it's just, it starts at DHS, but we basically see um, almost every government agency involved in this. It's frightening. I'm out of time. I yield back. A uh, gentleman uh, from Massachusetts, uh, Mr. Lynch, is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I do need to correct the record. Uh, so there's been the suggestion here that uh, the FBI and other government agencies uh, pressured employees at Twitter uh, to uh, validate these theories of foreign influence. Uh, when we had Mr. Roth, who was uh, Yoel Roth, who's the former global head of trust and safety at Twitter, so we asked Twitter uh, if there was uh, pressure applied, and Mr. Roth said, "No, I would not agree with that." The FBI, this is his quote: "The FBI was quite careful and quite consistent to request review of the accounts, but not to cross the line into advocating." for Twitter to take any particular action. So, so that's what Twitter said about the actions of the FBI vis-a-vis uh, -vis Twitter. Uh, Mr. Taibbi, <clears throat> in 2019, uh, Special Counsel Robert Mueller unequivocally found that the Internet Research Agency owned by Yevgeny Prigozhin, the same oligarch who runs uh, the Wagner Group, carried out an extensive social media disinformation campaign to help then-candidate Donald Trump and to hurt Hillary Clinton. He also found that the Russian intelligence interfered with the 2016 election via a hack-and-release campaign damaging to the Clinton campaign. Uh, these, these particular findings came on the heels of the unanimous assessment on the part of the United States 18 intelligence agencies that Russian President Putin, quote, ordered an influence campaign in 2016 aimed at the presidential election, close quote. They also followed the release of a bipartisan Senate Intelligence Committee report finding that Russia and Vladimir Putin engaged in, I quote, aggressive, multifaceted effort to influence the U.S. president election. So, Mr. Taibbi, do you believe, do you believe that the Russians and their oligarch-controlled Internet Research Agency interfered in the 2016 election via this <clears throat> social media disinformation campaign? Do you believe that? Mr. Congressman, my disagreement with the issue... Well, I think this is a this is basically a yes or no question. Either you think so or you don't, and I don't have a lot of time, so. Okay, well then I'm I'm going to answer not in the sense that you uh, that you're putting it. Okay. Um, I think okay. all countries all right. engage in do, off offensive in information you, operations. The you, question is scale. Do and, you believe and, that and the Russia Twitter files are hacking? Reclaiming my time is how it works now. I'll ask the questions, and you try to provide an answer if you can. Um, you have to allow him to answer. Do you sure. believe? The gentleman is out of order and should not be interrupting a member asking a question on our you, side, Mr. Chairman. Reclaiming my time from everyone, uh, do you believe that Russia engaged in a hack and release campaign damaging to the Clinton campaign uh, back in 2016? Again, uh, just I don't know. And, and I, would, I would say it's okay. irrelevant. All right, let me ask Mr. Schellenbeck. Uh, these are pretty easy questions. That's just whether you believe it or not. Uh, Mr. Schellenbeck, same question. Do you believe that the Russian oligarch-controlled Internet Research Agency interfered in the 2016 election? I think that they tried to. Okay. Fair enough. Uh, Mr. Schellenbeck, do you believe that the Russians engaged in a hack-and-release campaign with respect to the uh, 
damaging information they released uh, regarding the Clinton campaign? To the best of my awareness, that is what happened. Okay, yes. fair enough. Thank you. Uh, That's not so the same thing. The reason influence. I understand. I understand. Yeah. Also, that material was true. Yeah. I mean, look. Uh, I let me introduce a couple of documents uh, just to reinforce uh, that we've got. Uh, I'd like that, is, to, that is not a legitimate predicate unanimous, for censorship. Unanimous. Reclaiming my time. Sure. Gentleman's out of order. So, Mr. Chairman, I'll ask unanimous consent to enter the indictment in the United States versus the Internet Research Agency, U.S. District Court for the District of Columbia, number 118-32. And i also ask to enter into the record the executive summary to volume one of the Mueller report, which states in March 2016, the GRU, uh, began hacking, this is the Russian agency, began hacking the email accounts of the Clinton campaign, volunteers and employees, including campaign chairman John Podesta. The GRU later released additional materials through the organization WikiLeaks. The presidential of campaign of Donald Trump showed interest in WikiLeaks releases of the documents and welcomed their potential damage to that candidate Clinton. So I've introduced without, these document, documents. Without objection. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I've, I've introduced time. these documents, but it's clear that, me, that Russia's use of social media to interfere in the 2016 election created abundant Gentleman's time reason. Is, abundant reason. Okay. We, I think for social media platforms to be.